Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. I went online to become a private detective. It was a private detective school online, and I paid online. I never heard from them again. I thought to myself, I either got ripped off, or this is my first case. This is a journalistic podcast, Shannon. We vaccinate our listeners with answers. And I'm going to keep lip syncing the important questions until TikTok gives me a show. Shannon, how can the moon landing be real if the moon itself is fake? That's not true, Mike. Oh, isn't it true, Shannon? You're fake. You're a hologram. One in five New Yorkers are food insecure. What's your solution for that, Mike? Fortune cookie. Because that's food and advice at the same time. Shannon, at least have the decency to backstab me, okay? You stab me in the front every time. Some fans can't watch the podcast because they're triggered by our sexuality. And message to those fans, we will leak a sex tape right into your mouth. This is Mike Vecchione Investigates. And you're not better than me. Welcome to another episode of Mike Vecchione Investigates. You're not better than me. Always remember that because a lot of you are on your high horse recently. Thank you for supporting my special, a Mike Vecchi on The Attractives. Ugly people can watch too. It's not just for attractive people. That's just what it's called. I know a lot of you are low-functioning and you take everything literally. You can watch it if you are unfortunate looking. Please watch it. You, you got nothing else to do. You don't have any dates. So um, it's for everybody. It's for attractives. It's for unattractives. And uh, thank you for your support. Please watch it. Please share it. A whole family could watch it. So um, thank you for that. Also, uh, thank you for uh, the Joe Rogan experience I just did, episode 1967. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. Joe is a great guy, and I was uh, thrilled, obviously, to do the podcast. We had a really good conversation. So um, watch uh, JRE, and I've been on a Theo Vaughn's podcast, another, uh, another big one. So uh, that was a great. I was on with my friend Nate Bargatze, also the director and executive producer of my special. So watch those two. Watch. I'll be on a bunch more um, talking about the special and also plugging this podcast, my own platform, Mike Vecchione Investigates, which we have, um, you know, I think we're underrated as a podcast and more people should watch. So feel free to share this podcast also. All right. Thank you guys for um, being here again. Shannon is in the cockpit. Natalie is in the navigator's seat. And uh, we have our guests today, Derek Drescher and Gio Perez. Um, comedians. And also they are the um, podcasters for the On The Gate podcast. Now, On The Gate podcast, guys. First of all, I know you guys from the stand, right. but uh, not much interaction. Right. I, I've talked to you before yes. about uh, the Mikey D mm -hmm. uh, documentary, right? Right, and uh, so we've we've talked a little bit, and we've met at the stand. Yeah. So you guys are there, but in passing, I, I don't know, you know, like uh, I think sometimes we're on the same shows, but you know, whatever. So what uh, I'm familiar with you guys, but not so just so our fans know. But I don't know you in depth. This is a chance to get to really get to know you in depth, and that's a nice way of saying investigating you cool. <laughs> both okay so uh derek let's hit you first of all on the gate podcast what's right. it about uh it's just two x like it started because me and him uh like when we met we met at uh an illegal show during the pandemic illegal right. indoor show to make you feel better yes yes more yeah. comfortable because you guys are x yeah yes is it 100%. bad to say x con no uh, yeah, x -Con. X -Con. Well, okay. the politically correct rehabilitated convict would be formerly yeah. incarcerated individual formerly i'm gonna write yeah. that down <laughs> formerly <laughs> incarcerated individual individual or individual ju slash justice involved yeah or fee fii yeah but X Con just sounds sounds like yeah, I love it. It's my favorite X Con. One, yeah. X Con. Yeah. Um, formerly incarcerated individuals. individuals yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you were doing an illegal show. Well, yes. yeah. He well he was doing the illegal right. show. Oh, I'm, he's I'm stitching on me already. It's, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no, because it, it was it was his show, and then I accidentally got invited. Like it wasn't. It was like a secret show. Yeah. yeah. And then a comic 
snitched on he, the show. He snuck in. And right. then I, snu- I accidentally snuck in. I didn't know I snuck in. Yeah. Is but, that a crime when you're doing, when somebody's doing something illegal and then you do something illegal to them? Uh, kind of that? cancels out, I would Does imagine. that cancel out? It's like Sometimes. robbing a drug dealer. They right. call the police on you. Yeah. Devil, it's a double negative. It. Right. No, but sometimes you can still get uh, a robbery charge if they're dumb enough to say it, because they'll just say, oh, they stole money from me. Right. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you know, they pulled out the gun. It was just the whole action of getting a gun pulled out on right. them. Right, right, right. This yeah. is heated up quickly. <laughs> so what was, uh, uh, Derek, what was illegal about the show? Well, Can you was, explain it to our fans? Yes. Or, you know, some, a little dim? Some folks might not like this, but, you know, the pandemic happened. Everything got shut down. I had a space that I could host uh, secret shows in right and uh, i started to i did it for about six months before everybody at the show got covid so okay. it was going pretty well it was indoor it was indoor did you and en- it was like come here and get covid yeah which yes. is that how you advertised it it was like you know let's see what happens let's yeah. see what happens let's see what happens yeah, let's roll the dice and if you have a vax card we will not let you in yeah, is well, that- yeah. we were i was so running away before going? the vax cards yeah. even yeah, this came is out. Before the it's like a speakeasy except for sick people. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. But we made it about six shows before everybody got COVID. The, okay. The whole show. Six Every- show and everybody's super spreader. Everybody got okay. it. Yeah, yeah. And uh and you want you fought to get into this. No, I just uh yeah. somebody <laughs> told me about it and then I walked right in right. after a group of comics. Mask or t- no mask? Nah, no, no mask. No mask. Yeah, I, yeah. mask. I was yeah. like, what are you I, doing here? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I went through the whole pandemic without a mask, never got sick until I got vaccinated right i went two years right? i think if you talk smack about the disease that's when you get it yeah that's my theory i mean the disease is vengeful it happens and it attacks people who are arrogant that's so true i said it yeah. on stage i feel yeah. the same way about heroin yeah. too is I, heroin if you talk shit about heroin yeah. you'll, you'll it get you yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was uh, at broadway comedy club and i like during my set i just said i beat covid like i, I was like i haven't got covid in two years like i won i right. beat covid right i got covid that weekend wow yeah, it gets you. Yeah, it gets you. Shit. It's a malicious. Yeah. It's a malicious disease. So you're doing an illegal show. Yes, you're fighting to get in, and that's yep. when you guys. You said, "What are you doing here?" Was yeah. it a confrontation? I was like, "What?" Because let, you guys are both. Yeah, tough, I was like, "You guys are both tough guys." Yeah. So I was like, "Who?" I don't like Dominicans. Who let this Dominican right. in here? And then we spoke, and we saw that we had more in common. In English. Yes. yes. Spanish. Broken Spanish. He Broken Spanish. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't speak Spanish. <laughs> He's just only Puerto Rican when he wants to say the N-word. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and the other time. All right. <laughs> okay. So there was a face-off, and then you guys became fast friends. Yeah, yeah. Right. that night, pretty much. Yeah, right. yeah. we kind of linked up. And he was like, hey, come back next. He's like, oh, you're a comic. He's like, come back next month. And then uh, that show is when we linked up. Yeah. And I remember just right. us talking. And then, like, we just, it was fast friends. And then we'll just sit in the car sometimes, tell, like, war st- old war stories right. and talk about what we want to do in comedy and yeah. i was like yo we should do a podcast because yeah. it was just like almost months straight of us yeah. talking every day and like that's really great yeah. i think it's illegal not to do a podcast oh yeah, yeah. when you have that kind of connection you will be brought up on federal charges you will yeah. be brought yeah. up yeah. yeah like you got to talk about it you have to talk yeah. about it um look I, I think you guys both have interesting stories and uh i i want to take this time to go through individually if i can so derek where are you from what is your uh uh, incarceration story how did you become a formerly incarcerated individual and then what is your uh how did you get into comedy okay so those three things let's break where are you coming from what's your background um what's your incarceration story and how did you get into comedy all right uh, yeah, i'm a puerto rican jew from new york right that's yeah, i'm from here and which uh, i think that's italian you translate <laughs> yeah puerto Irish rican jew equals italian <laughs> yeah <laughs> According to the tra- according to the ethnic yeah. translation table, <laughs> you have an Italian vibe to you. Yeah, it's a New York, very greaseball vibe. Yeah, yeah very um, violent. Yeah, <laughs> aggressive. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and I uh, I started getting into trouble early in my life. Both my parents very blue collar people worked more than one job. I stayed with my grandmother a lot. Okay. Grandma got sick, passed away. I didn't know how to. Uh, to uh, you know, take that. I didn't right. know how to express myself. I started uh, robbing stores, stealing cars, things of that. Was there ang- there had to be anger first, right? Was it, it anger, was the- or the- and then and then it manifested itself into because anger. You know, a lot of people go through uh, easiest that thing kind of to stuff. feel. Easiest but the anger thing, I mean, it's a big jump between just feeling angry and robbing stores, right? For our fans, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, anger was definitely played a very big part in it. Yeah. Anger still plays a very big part in my life today. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, I've got it more under control, but uh, it's still there. 
It's so let me know podcasts. if I'm making you furious. No, no, no. In case I'm, this I'm, turns into yeah. a... I'm full of glee right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, usually uh, when we do our podcast, we have Natalie uh, turn the lights red yeah. to let people know he's angry. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. once yeah. I'm like, good. Natalie, hit the red lights. And Natalie, then, how long has it been? It's been a while. It's been quite a few episodes, right. Right, if I'm being honest. Yeah. So it's like a mood ring, but with the lights. Yes. Right. Yeah. It yeah. lets people know. Yeah. And then I just say mean things. Nothing even close to funny. But what about the... Incredible Hulk, like, do you have, like, he was a guy who would, like, increasingly get angry and then turn green and then just start, uh, he really didn't do that much, he turned over cars. Yeah. He would, like, throw stuff. And yeah, smash buildings yeah. up Army and stuff tanks like that. and yeah. shit. Yeah, that was, it would have been cool pretty, if I could do that. It would have been great. Pretty interesting. Kept those cops from kicking the shit out of me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so you, you, you get angry because of your grandmother's death? Yeah, and I, then I don't you know start, how to express myself, yeah, yeah. you know? So you start robbing. You fall in with the wrong crowd, yeah, or are you I'm individually just, 100%. just robbing stuff? Yeah. I did fall in with the wrong crowd. Where is this in New York, by the way? Uh, Brooklyn. Okay. So I did fall in with the wrong crowd, but what a, my... My mother and father always used to be like, you gotta get away from those kids. But like, I was, I became the worst one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And your mother and father is a two parent home. Yeah. Two parent home. Yeah. So, those of you out there who are like, two parent homes are important. Sometimes they don't work yeah. that good. Yeah. I could say that my parents did everything that they yeah, could. Yeah. They did the, what they could. <laughs> yeah. But you were just wild? Bad. Yeah. Very bad kid. Yeah. I even had that conversation because, you know, they started sending me to a lot of doctors, psychologists, and all that shit. Right. And then my father, we were just talking with him. He's like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that kid. He's like, I, yeah. think, I think you're just bad. But did your dad like put the hammer down a little bit? Was he like a disciplinarian and like, hey, you can't do this again? My mother was more of the disciplinarian. My father, you know, he was, they were both very good. Mo- mo- they were both very good mom and dad. My mother was definitely the more fiery one, mm-hmm. you know. And my father would do whatever was Your needed. dad's Jewish, your mom's Latina. No, my mother is a Puerto Rican Jew. A Puerto Rican Jew? Yeah, my father's German with some German. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's Jewish on both sides. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, can I, uh, this may be a stupid question, but according to um, the internet, there are no stupid questions. Right. <laughs> How do you rob a store? Like, w- what is the process of robbing a store? <laughs> I mean, you just got to get your... Uh, what is the store, by the way? The Most of it is guts. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, I, and these things, I'm not proud of these things. Do you case the place first? You case the place. I used to case drug dealers a lot also. You'd rob drug dealers? I'd rob drug dealers, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's both. You get It's like a two for one. You get money and drugs. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of benefit. Yep. But they're usually armed. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes. But then, yeah, if you do a case, you could see like when shifts would switch or when somebody's going to be alone, and right. that's when you would make your move. Well, let's get to the stores first. What kind of stores would you rob? Mostly bodegas, okay, gas stations. Yeah, those things. guys can be rough too. Those things guys have yeah. are armed. I've had I've had some that didn't work out well for me. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But do you go in with a mask over your head? No, I never wore a mask inside of a. Okay. I yeah. the store you want, them to, you want them to open the register so you go in, you buy something. So right. you'll have like a twenty dollars. Okay. You'll go buy like a cigar and be like, hey, and as soon as they open that register, that's when the gun comes out. Okay. Because they can just be like, I can't open the register. Now that once it's open, that's when Right. Yeah. And, oh that's smart. Yeah. Um you ever tried to rob um I was a good in English and not so good in math, so I would <laughs> I was always like I would try to rob with a note. So you know, yeah, it's like banks. I have if you a do gun, banks with a note, and then maybe a poem, something, right. so they get something out of it. Also, so if you rob the, the, the bank with a note, it's much less time. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like a year and a third, I think. You, you get out. In town. But even if you say it's like, look, I do have a gun and I am serious, right? But I think that you're a great person. I mean, <laughs> yeah. comp- pepper it with compliments, <laughs> yeah. and I would love to have some money from your bank. <laughs> yeah. And it's nothing personal against you. You're not in any danger. <laughs> you know, it's just like the note. You kind of can explain it out. At the end, you just be like, are we still cool after this? Yeah. 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 Circle yeah. yes one. or no. <laughs> Circle yes or no, and then have like the little heart with the arrow going That's through great. It. Yeah. Uh, Do you little... like me? Like yeah. more than friends? <laughs> more than friends? Yeah. Can we talk after this? Yeah, you so put great. your number on it. Like, don't give this to the cops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Call this me. Please. For you. <laughs> don't be not cool about this <laughs> and give this to the cops. Yeah. Yeah, you just go down because you hit on the tellers. <laughs> it's that, so you know? great. It's like, yo, can I get you an Instagram? Yeah. He's like, I don't I thought about that. I thought about like, you know, I'm in a relationship now, but when I was single, it was like giving a note if the teller is hot, but then she might think she's getting robbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, you go down for robbery and sexual harassment yes. at the same time, bro. She yeah. just screams. She puts her hands <laughs> up. Oh my god, this is unwanted sexual yeah. attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happened then? You're robbing stores, which robbing I think so is very th- interesting, and robbing drug dealers. Cars, but the dr- the drug dealers. Did you know them? Some I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's it, kind of awkward. It's like, remember when you robbed? I yeah. thought we were friends. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we were buddies. Yes. Absolutely. Remember when you robbed me two days ago? Yeah. yeah. 
But I mean, like, it's I the drugs, so they understand. would see people. Well, I started just doing crimes, then uh, then I got in, the drugs came later. But yeah, you would rob people who like lived in your building. Oh wow, yeah, and that's awkward in the elevator. That's very yeah. awkward in the hallways. Absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> he God. robbed them in the elevator. But you always robbed them with a weapon. Did you have a Most gun? Of the or time, it's like I'm going to beat yeah, you with a bat. To, I used to have. There was uh, always an impending threat of violence, right? Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't give you the money. So, I, if anybody I robbed is listening to this, I just want to let you know there was never any bullets in the gun. Mm. It wasn't even a real okay. gun. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it, no, it, it was a BB. Gun. Did anybody ever fight back? Yes. And how did that? Did you get the best of them and get out? Obviously, I, I, there killed. was times where I had got the best of them. There was times where I had to run for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And was it a group? Did you have like a getaway driver, a safe cracker? Anytime I ever did anything with a group, I always end up getting caught. Right. And doing time. So I would like Because to... they would catch some guys and they would flip them? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And then what got you uh, as an incarcerated individual now that you're formally incarcerated? Well, the I got caught uh, stealing a car, took the cops on a big chase. I ended up doing three years of my life because of that. Right. Um, a lot of VOPs, violation of probation, violation of parole, I had some simple assaults. Things like that. VOPs. Yeah. VOPs. I like that. I like abbreviations. Yeah. So yeah, cool. It's a lot. This VOPs. is a VOP. Yeah. Mr. Joshua, we're bringing here today uh, an order two VOPs. VOPs. One on March 10th, one uh, on April 11th. And now you're in comedy, you're doing well, so you're a VIP. V I uh, yeah. Maybe that could be the name of the episode, Shannon, from VOPs a to v VIPs. A very... I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, Shannon. I'm not the producer. A very incarcerated yeah. prisoner. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so so you go to jail for stealing a car. Yeah. And, and, uh, like joyriding is a different crime than um, stealing a yeah. car. You weren't joyriding. No. You were trying to steal the car. No, I stole the car. As a guy who's had his car stolen. You I stole. Maybe you stole my car. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I stole a car from a drug dealer. Mm. And uh, I thought that there would be drugs in, in the vehicle. But right. There was not. Right. So I just had the vehicle. And on my way to bring the vehicle to... Uh, you know, a place where I would get money for said vehicle. Chop shop? Yeah. Can I jump it and say chop shop? <laughs> yeah. See, I'm cool. I would do okay in jail. You're hip. <laughs> <laughs> you took it to a chop shop, then what happened? I was trying to get right. there. And then I, uh, the police, uh, you know, I'd done something wrong. I don't know if I was speeding or whatnot. Right. Uh, but the police were pulling me over and I did not stop. And right. then, uh, Maybe because you were in a stolen vehicle. That could have been you it. You got to also remember, so I'm 13 years old. Like oh, I, wow. I could barely see over the steering wheel. Yeah. yeah. And then more cops came, and I was like, oh. So then I started using my blinkers and everything and going the speed limit. And then uh, they basically got me to pull into a dead end. And then they blocked it off. And then I uh, I just, you know, I kept, like, flooring it towards the roadblock. Right. And then backing up and doing it. And police were flying over the hood of the car and the roof of it. Wow. And, yeah, and then they slim jim the door open finally because the car just stopped. You refused to get out of the car I even? Wanted, yeah, I want to get out wow. of the car, yeah. At 13? At 13, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, uh, As a black man, you shouldn't have. Yeah, you, you that's what my dad said. Car. Did they, um, <laughs> I, 13 is young, did they take you to timeout after that? No, they sent me to one of the worst places they could send a child, which would be Spofford Juvenile Correctional Facility. Wow. Yeah. But uh, when they sl when they got the door open, they slim jimmed it open. A lot of people don't know about this. Not everything is electronic now. Computers. Back in the day, we had this thing called a slim jim to get you right into a car, easy. Right. Yeah. So I was holding the locks on both sides like this, and uh, they, you know, I, one of them got me. To, you know, they didn't. They they caused a diversion. I took my hand off, and then they got that door open. And then they 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 put a beating on me like I never. I, mean, I did, and I deserved every right. every inch of it. Yeah, right. they beat me out of my shoes. Wow. Yeah. I used to hear the old timers talk about that. They beat you out of your shoes. And that's not true. And then it happened. Now they can't do it because of police cameras. <laughs> the cameras. Yeah. But then they get accidentally shut off. off. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, man. I forgot to charge it. So this continued to what age? Till I was 33. Oh, my God. Yeah. So that was just one of the stories. And it continued to That's the first big one. Yeah. That was a big one. 33. Yeah. And uh, how many times have you been in and out? I have been arrested over 30 times in my life. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're a rough dude. I mean, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Not and anymore. We'll get into the uh, jail time after. But uh, then how was your liaison into comedy after 33? So while I was incarcerated, I used to make guys laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, you know they would say you should do comedy or funny. It was weird as I used to like do impressions of the guards and things like that, which right. is something I don't do now. I don't do impressions. Right. Um, and then he did the talent show in prison. Yeah, and it was, prison talent show. Yeah, yeah. threw some uh, Kool Aid on my lips. He did put drag. A dress on. He yeah. did it all in drag. Did it in drag. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the way to go. That's the way to win. Yes. If you want to win yeah. in prison. Absolutely. Derek dressed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Derek Dresser. <laughs> the um yeah so those guys told me that and then I I, I got out. And uh, once I was like, I got to turn my life around, uh, you know, I started to write jokes that I thought were funny. Yeah. And then uh, I went to an open mic and I was like, oof, this is, uh, this is going to be not as easy as yeah. I thought it was yeah. going to be. And then, uh, you know, I tried to, I wasn't writing about like what I experienced. I was trying to just do like observational quirky stuff right. and it just wasn't me. Right. And I just started to write more about like, you know, my heroin addiction and and jail and robbery right yeah i love making robbery funny robbery is actually when you're standing from the outside yeah. it's very funny yeah. <laughs> if you're being robbed i'm sure it's terrifying it's very so, traumatic, yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> traumatic it's or if you're getting arrested for it yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. sure that's yeah, yeah. tables yeah. are turned then yes yeah, it's funny um, if you get away with it but uh did you know you knew mikey d right i did not know him i never got to meet him okay. in person uh i know uh lois yes um this is great you know, I, I have had a few people tell me before that, like, the stuff I talk about reminds them of him. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I was good friends with him. He's a great guy. Yeah. And I watched him transform from, like, in the in those mics that you're talking about. Like, he was always very funny, but he just, he would get angry if the crowd did not respond because he was edgy. You know, he would get very angry. And, and, he, and I slowly watched him be able to figure out how to deal with it. Because right. they, they would pull back. His yeah. jokes were, like, very raw and edgy. And I watched the crowd pull back and then him get like furious with them. Right. And I understood why. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, come on, man. And it's like he would do that. And then, but I watched him figure it out. And he eventually, at the end of his life, he was just destroying in front of mainstream audiences. I didn't hear about him until I just, I was just on YouTube. Like once I started, once I got clean off of heroin, I was, you know, I liked comedy when I was young, but I wasn't like into it. I didn't know what was going on right. really. And then I started watching, you know, like uh, uh, this is not happening. And then, you know, I heard Ali Sadiq tell a story about jail and I was like, oh shit. And then just one day, uh, Mike, Mikey D popped up and I was like, oh, like I fucking, I can feel what the right. fuck this guy's talking right, about. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he had a lot of abuse growing up and, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah. So he, Came from the Bronx and just was very like, uh, but he was so funny, man. He was so funny. And, and to watch him turn, watch him develop from a raw comic who would get furious at the crowd if they didn't like his jokes to somebody who who just mastered it after a while. And then last comic standing, he got some accolades for that before his death. Yeah, he was really about to pop. Yeah, he really was. Yeah, I think had, today he would have been huge. Yeah, with the know? one man show too, right? That was yeah, he was training right for that one man yep. show, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so, and so that's how you, that's how you, you just kept, how many years, how many years have you been doing it? Five. Okay. Five now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you started and then you just started, uh, when did, when you started talking about your authentic stories, mm -hmm. that's when you started getting a taste for it, like really like. Well, people were listening, yeah. even if they weren't laughing. Right. And, uh, you know, and I, I had some older comics who would you know got to hear me they're like you know keep talking about what right. you're talking about right you know just uh because you're, you're you know there needs to be not everybody can be the same there right needs to be contrast right and then yeah so that's that's basically when and you know it's not easy to make that stuff funny sometimes no, 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 you know no. what i mean and yeah, i it's... I know you, you spoke about him getting furious i would get furious at mics too i threatened to throw the mic stand into the crowd yeah and to the, you know, maybe that'll get a reaction out of you guys if right. I fling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a <laughs> week. just pulling back. That was a week like... ago. I was just out of town. Calm down, man. Was... But you got to understand from the crowd's perspective, it's like they're not used to any of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're just coming in. They don't let, you know. Yeah. yeah. They, they're reacting the way that either out of genuine shock or <laughs> or just the way they think they should be reacting. Right. Sometimes that happens. So right. it's a, it's, yeah, it's like finding it. But, you know, for all of us, it takes like time to hone it. So. That's super interesting. Gio, let's get to you. Um, same thing. Where did you grow up? How did you, uh, where did you come from? Uh, I was born in Yonkers, but my parents were, uh, they came out here from Dominican Republic mm. in the 20s. And like by the 30s, they already had like all four, they had four kids. 
And we lived in Yonkers. It was like uh, like public housing out there. So I grew up in the hood for like the first 14 years of my life. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up moving to Long Island because my father uh, bought a house for my mom's brother. And uh, so we went from like the hood to the suburbs. Right. So like, and it changed my life because like, I didn't even know what a lawn was. You right. know what I mean? Like right. I just called it grass. Yeah. So I started finding like, you know, I spent my developmental years in Long Island, right. but like I had that influence from just being like in a all, like a neighborhood with nothing from like nothing but minorities. Right. Like I I went from no white people to nothing but white people. Right. So I learned words like developmental Amen. and stuff yeah. like Amen. that. And Amen. I yeah. and that that did was you, like, did you like the whites? Oh, I loved it. It was yeah, it was, yeah. It was uh, I got a, I got I got a taste of both worlds. Right. You know, and uh, did the whites side taste a little bland? No, nah, there was some season in there. Yeah, some season. Okay. Yeah, Long Island whites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mostly salt and pepper, but you know. It so was if somebody sauce, said, "I've right? got, I can't hang out. I got to cut the lawn." You'd be like, "Cut the what?" They're like, "What is that? What did you just say? What the fuck is a lawn? <laughs> it's a lawn. Hey, what's a backyard? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean?" <laughs> okay, so, um, so how was Long Island? How did you enjoy that? Uh, it was fun because like it introduced me to racism. Yeah, <laughs> and that was the funniest shit ever because like I wouldn't hear like jokes about minorities because right. we was all around minorities right. and it was just like stupid shit that we would say to each other right but then but were hearing... there white jokes in the hood uh a lot of white jokes oh, white yeah. jokes yeah and then when you get out to the white to the white area then it was minority jokes yeah, it was all minority okay. jokes yeah and then like the, the words like uh like white people would say i thought were funny yeah like one time this kid thought i i farted and he's like yeah. dude did you rip one and i just thought that was hilarious i was like who's rip one i was like because yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you are ripping your asshole a little yeah, bit and i was yeah, like that yeah. made sense yeah and it was I, I i thought it was just like very interesting culture clash yeah, yeah. that's a culture clash right there. and and like uh i think my mom felt like a little better about uh letting me out because yeah. like when i lived in when i lived in yonkers it was always getting into fights like I'd sneak off to like the back, uh, the back courtyard mm-hmm. uh, where like all the drug dealers hung out because yeah. I thought they were hilarious. They'll right. just sit around just talking shit, yeah. And I'll just sit there like I, like you know nine years old and just hear them talking shit until my mom comes, beats my ass, and then they don't want me back there because my mom comes and Make just it like hot. makes it like right, 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 like right. yo shorty get out of here. You know what I mean? We don't you know yeah. Mom gonna come over here and make it hot. Kid. Yeah. yeah. So it was just like one of those things. Wow. And then when I moved to Long Island, it was more like oh yeah you know go out there. But this was like before the heroin pandemic. So it was still kind of all right. Right. But then once like heroin got out there, that's when shit got like bad. In Long Island. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because whites love the opiates. Yeah. Oh, they love the pills. Opioids. Opioids. You even say it. Correct. I don't know. Fentanyl, Oxycontin, Oxycontin, Roxaset. Yeah. We had like the biggest uh, overdose. Um, we were like the overdose overdose capital of the world mm. from like a certain year. That deserves a horn. Yeah, that deserves a horn. <laughs> Shout out to Suffolk County, <laughs> Suffolk County, suffering Suffolk County. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like and- they, they have they have like uh, actual law. Like if you get if you sell somebody f- uh, heroin and it has fentanyl in it and they die, uh, it's manslaughter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so like they're the first county, I guess, to do that. Wow. Not a bad That's law. That's how bad it was. Not yeah. a bad law. Yeah, I lost a lot of friends on that shit. On opioids. Yeah, opioids and or getting locked up for. Did selling you ever? It. Did yeah. you ever do any of it? Yeah, I got. How does it make you feel? Opioids. Oh, great. It's, is it it's a great the best one? feeling, yeah. It's just like I mean, you, let's not celebrate it. You ever, you ever wake up? It's <laughs> 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 yeah. ever been really cold and you put like a nice warm blanket on. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. That's yeah. opioids. Yeah. That's opioids. Yeah. Wow. Well, we don't want to sell it to our underage fans. You know, Yo, Kratom. I mean, <laughs> do, yeah, do Kratom. It it's better. <laughs> it's uh, better to stay in school. Yes. Yeah. But um, stay yeah, in that's school it. so you could uh, write prescriptions for it. Yeah. And not take it. Yes. 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 But yeah, like they, like it was big on drugs. So like I always gravitated to like I gravitated to the other kids. Is gravitated one of the white words? Yeah, I didn't learn that. In, that's a Long Island word. I learned. It's a Long Island word. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. So uh, um, I assimilated myself with the bad kids. Ooh, another one. Did that make go sense? Did I use that word? Right? Yes, hell yeah. Assimilated yourself? Assimilated myself wow. with the... With the, with with the, the I always, yeah, I always like went... Since I was a young kid, I always like went towards like the bad kids. Yeah. And then like I came out here, like the only bad kids were kids that sold drugs. So I just hung around drug dealers. And I slowly got into it where I started selling weed. That turned into coke. And then by 17, my mom found like a, a half ounce of Coke in my house. 
threw it in the threw it in the toilet, Wait. broke the scale, and then kicked me out of the house. Wow. It sounds like the the Biggie Smalls biography. Yeah, I stole it from him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the Dominican Biggie Smalls. What is this? Yeah, no, Potatoes? She, yeah, my mom found a shotgun under my bed once, and she just called me yeah. screaming. She's wow. like, what the fuck? Are you a terrorist? Yeah. It, was a, it was like you a look big 12-gauge like shotgun. Huh? You look like a terrorist a little I bet, bit. I heard that. My Where did you get that. the 12-gauge shotgun from? I just... just friends like the i just had connects mic. yeah i just yeah. knew people and then like and you were like you know what'd be cool if i had a 12 gauge a 12 gauge mossberg yeah, that I, is... I had, i've always had like at least four or five guns selling four or drugs. five guns selling drugs the best weapon to I have in your safer. bedroom would be a shotgun yeah. in case wow. somebody comes in because you could cover a lot of area which is you know yeah and uh yeah she found that she kicked me out so then it came it turned into something like i, I wanted to sell drugs so like oh shit now i have to sell drugs and then i got to where were you living uh, I was it was out in Long Island. Like, oh, no, I got where, after you got kicked out of your mother's house. Oh, first I did a hotel room for two weeks. Then I moved into one of those boarding houses where you can rent the room. But then did I the got, hotel room feel like vacation for a little while. You're like, oh, this is actually pretty good. No, I feel it was like in I'm a, on vacation. No, it was in a crackhead motel. Yeah, so it was just like it felt like suck. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, very, like a very bad vacation then. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> can we at least save my comment for something? <laughs> a vacation, <laughs> a, a low income was, va- yeah, vacation. Yeah, yeah. It was a crackhead vacation. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's not good. And then you were renting a room in a um, in like a boarding house. Yeah, but it had so many rules. Like I couldn't have girls over. Yeah. So definitely can't have shotguns under the bed. No, I definitely more strict than your mom. No, I had guns. Oh, did you? Guns and drugs in there, but th- no girls. Yeah. Okay. And uh, hard to hide a girl under your shirt, right? No, or under my bed. <laughs> while she's still alive, it's hard right. to hide them wow. while they're still moving. Damn, she killed her. Yeah. Took a, so, yeah. This podcast <laughs> took a dark turn. I wasn't expecting it. You know, I'm just doing the interview. And I didn't know we were. I didn't know we were talking about first degree murder. Um, okay, so. Yeah. So, uh, all right. So you're in the. What happened then? So eventually, I I, uh, I met this girl who uh, I was selling coke to her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. She was like from Tennessee, and like we would talk and like flirt a little bit, and then uh, I gave her like a proposition, like, "Hey, I need somebody." Because I was 17, I was like, "Hey, I need somebody to help me get an apartment." She was like 22, so I was like, "You know, I'll pay you, and you get me the apartment." And then it ended up turning out where she moved in with me. Wow. So she left the dude and moved in with me. And um, was that awkward? And you tried to sell him drugs again? Yeah, he would. He would get stuff. Answers the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really bad. Yeah, because she moved up here for him. And then yeah. left him. But you know what cuts the awkwardness of that? A shotgun. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That'll clear the air real quick. It clears but. the air. And everybody just seems to get along. And then when one person has a shotgun and the other person. Yeah. Just, you don't even have to cock it. It's no. just so intimidating. Yeah. It was a double pistol sh- grip. Yeah. Like it was just, it looked like a machine gun. Yeah. yeah. It was just a big ass fucking wow. gun. It was a street sweeper. No, it wasn't a street sweeper, but it was just a Mossberg that was. Had an extra pistol grip and the shoulder fucking rest. See, I'd be that guy. I'd show up with nunchucks. And I'd be like, I'm going to show this guy a thing or two. So and he just opens the back. door with a shotgun. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm going home to change my underwear. <laughs> you find, could keep her. It's find fine. another girlfriend. Yeah, I'm going to find, find another, another girlfriend. girlfriend. Let me get on those dating sites. Yeah. Yeah. You're on your way <laughs> just, just came over to tell you, yeah, yeah. that I'm, I'm getting on these dating sites. I'm going to move on with my life yeah. if you uh, let me keep it. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, so you okay, so that was cool. And then how did that work out? Are you guys uh, married? <laughs> no, we're basically <laughs> married. Yeah, common law married. Common law. Yeah. Uh, you stay with her that long? No, no. Oh. It was uh, it's like eight months. Right. You know she was only with you for the coke, right? No, no she never did coke. What? Her boyfriend did coke. Yeah. She was just a whore like that. Yes. Wow. Yes. Oh, be- yeah. second best head I've ever gotten. Yeah. Second best blowjob. Oh, I love ever. the story ever. that you tell when you were in the extra large white t-shirt. And a bandana, and she was blowing you in like the garage or something. Oh shit yeah, like and a friend walked in. Yeah. I was on ecstasy. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of wild nights. That now that I think about it, it was kind of illegal because <laughs> I was seventeen. But right. seventeen is the age of, is is well, no, uh, it's illegal legal. for her. She was twenty two. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, was I mean. um, corrupting a minor. Yeah, 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 yeah. which yeah. sounds weird in this situation. <laughs> sounds completely backwards. But, <laughs> but I mean, I was paying I mean, the all law the bills. Funny, you were paying so, all the bills. I was paying all the bills, and so. she never did blow. Nope, that's crazy. What was she? Did she drink? Yeah, she drank. Okay, she was a drinker. So how long did this last? Uh, just in selling the, drugs. Yeah, you, you know, you're in the halfway house with this girl. How did you break up? Where, no, where did no, you, we got an uh, actual apartment. Go we were living in somebody's house. Okay. We had like a nice apartment. Right. It wasn't furnished though. I had a TV uh, that was on a nightstand and then an air mattress, an elevator air mattress. Okay. But like I had like maybe forty thousand dollars in that apartment. Nice. Oh my god. So I could afford like and usually like almost. Eight to ten thousand dollars worth of coke. Now, just for our uh, for guys like me, I don't know. I, I've never been uh, on that side of the law. It's just like, is it 
does it take a lot of fo- it just seems like it's a lot of focus yeah. to sell drugs yeah and it's a lot it's a job basically and yeah. you have to be obviously be careful be careful you don't get ripped off by other drug dealers yeah. but also you have to make the sales mm-hmm. like do you wrap is it pills are you wrapping the pills up how are you patch- packaging stuff and are the drop offs super like i got to make sure that this guy is real yeah. Uh, yeah. i'm not dealing with anybody i don't know yeah, yeah, he would have to watch out for a guy like me. I, they'd have to get high. If I didn't know them, even if like somebody I they were coming with somebody I knew, mm-hmm. I'd be like, all right, they just have to get high in front of me at least once. Right. And then I, after that, I'll deal with them. But I won't even sell. I won't even sell. I won't even say that I'm there to sell anything. I'll just be like, I won't answer. I'll be like, yo, let him take a bump. Or if they want crack, they have to take a hit in front of me. If it's and dope, do watch they have it? to bang in front of me. I have to watch it. I have to. You have to watch it. And it's like one of those things, like I used to work in a, a facility for uh, kids at mental health. And when they take their medicine, we had to look in their mouths to make sure that, uh, uh, yep. not like the Dalai Lama, who was yeah, sticking sucking his the tongue, tongue out the yeah. kid. <laughs> but uh, we had to look in the mouth and make sure <laughs> Wait, that the kid, that was a new The Dalai Lama's too. a pedophile now? The yeah, Dalai yeah. Lama, um, yes. I don't know. I think it was a- He has a thing where he wants to, he told the little kid to uh, suck on his tongue. Damn, hey man. I'd like to read the explanation before I pass judgment. <laughs> I want to love the Dalai Lama. I want to love him, so I don't. I, I don't know what that is. But uh, you, you look in the mouth and uh, and make, make sure, sure it's clear. The so you make sure they do drugs because a cop can't do drugs. Nope. Yeah, and they can can't. they? They can't. Can they fake it? And they um, fake it? You watch it closely so that they're yeah, not faking it. I'm, and you could tell if somebody's smoking crack and they take a hit, and a real hit. Do you videotape it to, in case you have to use it in court? No. <laughs> That's pretty nah, smart. No evidence. Right. Yeah. I didn't even like, uh, like back then it was still like flip phones and stuff. This was like before smartphones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I still, I didn't even have social media or nothing back then. Yeah. Like The shit the kids do on Instagram now, they'll flash like fucking racks and racks of yeah, cash gone. just asking yes. to get yeah. caught right yeah. posting pictures i know a lot of people that got caught posting like your location well yeah. yeah posting the location that's how the one guy got killed at the Pop comedy smoke. store oh no this is the comedy guy. store he got i guess he was a drug dealer or something and he was at the comedy store and was on that outside deck of right. the comedy they store post his location came right up and shot him in the head wow because he posted his location how long ago was that that was uh before the pandemic but it was about, it was about five years before See? the pandemic i want to say yeah, so it was happening, but it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And um okay, so what's the thing that gets you incarcerated? Well, the first one was before I sold drugs. I uh I was I was trying to make it to this hotel party mm-hmm. and I didn't have like a lot a, of hotel things going yeah, on. Yeah, it's it, it was it wasn't even a hotel party. It was my friend selling crack out of a hotel and it had some girls hanging out there. So yeah. I was like, I want to go hang out. We call them crack whores. They weren't crack whores, they were just girls that Wanted to hang out with drug dealers who had money. Whatever, man. Right. <laughs> they were, they were they, <laughs> the crack whores were for for like we, we, weekends, we, like weekday nights. When okay, we got nothing else going on. But it was like a weekend. <laughs> I was already drinking, and I was like, I can't like bike it out there. So I was like, I'll go. I'll break into cars and try to take like find money because people leave money in their cars. And then I ended up getting into this work van, and I saw the keys in it. So I said, Oh fuck it! I'm just gonna take this whole van and drive there. But I ended up uh, missing a turn, and when I went to make a U-turn, I realized the brakes were like shot to shit. Right. So I ended up flipping the van, and uh, uh, I got stuck in the van. I couldn't get out. Do you feel like that was entrapment? Like uh, the- <laughs> I was definitely entrapped. <laughs> no, but then leaving the leaving the keys in in a van with bad brakes, yes. almost daring you to steal. I could have yeah. sued them. I actually I think, now that I think about it, it's yeah. too late. But I should have. They them. cut the brake lines just to yeah. trap you. Yeah. So you flip it. You're trapped in the van. What then? So uh, this guy finally comes and he gets me out. And I had my bike in the van. So I'm like, Hey, can you pass me my bike? That's lazy. Yeah. I mean, your bike I, in the van. Yeah. Just I ride needed, your bike. Well, I, I had I couldn't leave my bike there. Okay. That would have been evidence. So mm-hmm. right. I was just gonna take the van, leave it by the hotel, and then just maybe bike it back or catch a ride with somebody. Right. And uh, the guy takes me in the bike out. And uh, I try to ride it away, and this other guy comes and goes like, hey, where the fuck are you going? Just the guy that just stopped to watch. And he held me there until the cops came. And I just lied the whole time. I said I had a license. I was like, oh, I left my license at home. I lied about whose car it was. I just made up everything, trying to buy time to get away. But they just boxed me, and I couldn't go anywhere. Right. And once they found they out I was They made a citizen's lying, arrest. Yeah. No, but now when the cops got there, they realized that I was lying right. when they ran everything. And they're like, all right, they handcuffed me, threw me in the car, and then I went to jail for like a week, and then got out. What jail, Rikers? No, no, no. This was in Long Island. So okay. It was just like Suffolk County. Okay. 
And that was like my first time ever going into jail. And then after that, it was just in and out, in hmm. and out after that. And how was that? Did you become desensitized to it? Because somebody yeah. like somebody yeah. like me, it's like that. That would have been crazy. Yeah, crazy yeah. experience. They say you learn how to. It is a horrible thing yeah. to become uh, okay with that happening yeah. in your life. Yeah, where you almost like it becomes where you know the routines yeah. already. Yeah, like yeah. when I'm going, like I I'll get sentenced. Like my third time getting like going into jail, I already knew like oh I'm going with like five pairs of underwear on, five socks, just because yeah. you need those things and you don't get them right away. Mm -hmm. So I was like oh I can come in loaded up with clothes, weed all in my ass, yep. matches, everything mm -hmm. I need to make the time go by. And that's why I was just like yo I'm I'm becoming a fucking jailbird. Uh, yeah, right. criminal. My father, the first time my father came to see me, I actually almost got emotional. And he was right. like hey cut that shit out, don't show right. emotion in front of these animals right. you know and then uh you know by the lat by like you know my later years when he started to come see me he'd be like wow look at you he'd be like you're you're uh you're becoming a real criminal now you know is, is that what you want to do he's like wow well, yeah 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 yeah, you become desensitized to all that shit. Yeah. You're like, this is what I do, and this is the price I pay sometimes. And the last one was the roughest one for me because- Me too. I, that, I actually had a kid now. Before, I was like, I'm going in, like, it's just me. Yeah. Like, now I have a girlfriend, I have a daughter. Um, I didn't have, like, a great job or anything at the time because I already had, like, became a junkie towards the end. Right. So- like it got to the point where I couldn't even sell drugs anymore because I couldn't hold it on long enough. Right, right. So at that point, I was just at my lowest, caught a gun charge, caught an assault charge, which was just me throwing a snowball at somebody. And they gave me a de uh, assault with a deadly weapon. Wow. Yeah. And Well, I, you are Dominican, so. Got an arm, a, baby. You got know, crazy. You got a strong arm. That's only a winter Yeah, yeah. Winter felony. charge. Yeah, winter <laughs> felony. <laughs> this, Mr. Perez being charged yeah. with a seasonal felony. I was, I, was, I was throwing that heat in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> they can only keep you in jail till March 22nd. Yeah. <laughs> you got to let you go at spring. Yeah. Um, right Passover, yeah. That's uh, and then, unbelievable. Yeah, I lost everything. So what's the, that's the last one. Yeah. And how did you make your way into stand-up comedy was it his show no no i've already been show. doing it for like three years by then mm -hmm. and uh like when i got out of jail that time uh my daughter's mother left me she, she got with somebody else was and she then, dominican also no she was black but she looked dominican okay and uh <laughs> I, I thought she was dominican at first. right and I, she's like no i'm just just black i thought she was dominican but she looked black yeah, my bad black. my yeah. fault but uh so uh after that happened uh, I almost relapsed again for like a month, and then I had family. They were like, "Yo, you want to get out of New York? Try something different." Right. Uh, so like, "Yo, come down to Alabama." And then my father's like, uh, yeah, "Like, so go down to Alabama. Alabama. We're gonna get you on meth." Now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alabama has rarely been the answer. To yeah. Any, no. But <laughs> any life question? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was for me this one time. Yeah. This, this one. Okay. Like, I'm like the one exception. Because when I went down there, it was like me getting away from all that shit. Yeah. Because I noticed. Uh, I'd get out of I stay I couldn't stay out of trouble because I'd see my friends mm -hmm. or like I'll see a, a certain person making money off of drugs. And I'm like, oh, if this fucking dickhead can make money, I, I like, can make money. What am I doing working at Panera Bread? Right, right. So I would always, you know, relapse they and get back into it. The drugs don't get you, the lifestyle. Yeah, the well. lifestyle. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, I went down there and I actually, you know, held a job for like a year and a half, started dating a girl, got my, had my own apartment down there, had my car, like I had everything going. But I still felt like ah, this is like I wasn't happy, mm -hmm. and then I just randomly got invited to a comedy show, and um, like that night I was like, oh, I really want to do this. He was right. like, Yo, I could do this. I man. was like, I could probably. Yeah, I had that in my mind. I was yeah. like, I saw them, and and like it was kids from like Atlanta, and they were talking about like one of them was talking about like street shit, and I was just like, Oh wait, maybe I can do this. Right, right. Like right. I, I'm not a observant person, but I could talk about my story. And, well, dude, uh, you were a prop comic when I met you. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. A, a big uh, Carrot Top fan. Yeah, yeah, I look like Carrot Top too. Yeah, but, with yeah, black hair. Black hair. I, I think that would be interesting hair. if you're, um, you know, a this former, prop was like a gun. Yeah. A formerly, <laughs> I was gonna say, formerly incarcerated individual. Your trunk is full of stolen stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Stuff that I stole from the crowd, yeah. Yeah. from their yeah, car. Like, Look right. at this, I got yeah. your watch. Yeah. yeah. Anybody's bra? Anybody? Need to get <laughs> changed in the great. car? <laughs> That's pretty great. But then we had yeah. that heart to heart when I was like, yeah. yo, you need to talk about, yeah. about the joint. Yeah. But yeah. the thing was, like, the last, during that last one, that last charge, uh, I was working in the kitchen and I met, uh, I met one of the, um, I met the, this guy who the, also the proprietors. Yeah, the proprietor. I met somebody who was involved uh, from the Stan Comedy Club, mm -hmm. um, and we would talk comedy. And uh, just I was like, oh, I want to do comedy one day. This is back like you know 
three years before I started. And he goes like, hey, you know, I run a, I work at a comedy club called The Stand. I'm a, I'm a part owner. And he was like, if you ever get five minutes, come talk to me. And then I had about like three and a half years in, I went there one time with him to hang out. And there goes Patrick walking right outside the club. And I was just like, yo, remember me? And he goes, I, I got, you told me to come see you when I got five. I got 10. I was like, I got, <laughs> I got seven and a half if I do wow, crowd work. 10 good ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, no, first thing he looks at me, he goes, he goes Sergio? No, nah, he goes, oh, get yeah, these nah. fucking kids away from me. Who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> but did it click in your head when he said seven to 10? <laughs> he meant minutes you meant years yeah, he's like seven yeah. to ten that's seven not ten. a bad bid yeah, yeah. He's like, I, could I could do that, that standing on my head <laughs> yeah. Yeah. the first no but he was just like but if you ever heckle anybody I'm kicking you out I was like what makes you think I'm gonna heckle that's the first yeah. thing you say yeah that's pretty great <laughs> alright let's go to pl- Shannon let's go you're gonna love me for this one because I can never remember it let's go to plugs and then uh, we'll hit the final uh, segment uh, you can find me, guys, at Comic Mike V on all social media platforms. Thank you for watching and supporting and commenting and subscribing and liking the YouTube premiere, which is now Wednesdays at 6 p.m. We changed the time, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Thank you guys for all the support from the special, Mike Vecchio on The Attractives. Please watch it. Please like it. Please comment on it. Please share it. Also, uh, please com- keep supporting this podcast. My road dates, MikeVecchione.com. I put some r- new road dates up. Um... Uh, Moon Tower Comedy Festival next week. Zanies in Chicago. Levity Live. Nyack. Um, uh, Grundy County, Tennessee. We'll be shooting something for my friend Ray Ellen at the Caverns. Um, Las Vegas for Skank Fest, obviously. Huntsville, Alabama, October 5th through the 7th. Stand Up Live. So uh, those are the dates. Hopefully I'll be adding more live dates. Support your boy, MikeVecchione.com, at Comic Mike V. Guys. Uh, follow me at Derek Drescher, uh, and then subscribe to On The Gate Podcast on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I will be at the Miami Improv on the 26th, the 28th, and 29th. I'll be in Boston, Boston Comedy Club. The 30th, I'll be at Laugh Factory in Chicago. And then May 20th, I'll be headlining for the first time uh, at the uh, Catskill Mountain Theater. So come see me out there. Cool. Yeah. Gio. Uh, let's see. Um... April 15th, I will be in North Brantford, Connecticut for Burn and Learn Comedy. Uh, April 21st, I'll be in Poughkeepsie, Laugh It Up with Karen Feehan. And uh, April 29th, Red Bank, New Jersey with Karen Feehan. And uh, uh, subscribe to our Patreon, On The Gate podcast on Patreon. Uh, We got uh, half-hour clips there that we put out every week. Go check that out. Oh, and April 25th, we'll be at The Stand, 23 Comedy. Me, Gio, Sam Santos, Dan Soder, Mark Norman. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, um, Shannon, what do you got? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at ShannonLee6982. Listen to my podcast, The Thing Is. Ding, we talk about bad dates, fighting, and ghosts. Wherever you listen to Mike Vecchio and Investigates, you can also watch it live for free every single Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern at gasdigitalnetwork.com slash live. That's absolutely for free. But the best way to support the show is to go to gasdigitalnetwork.com, use promo code MVI. You'll get a one-week free trial, which gives you access to every single episode of this show we've ever done, as well as every single episode of all the shows on Gas Digital Network. If you have questions or comments or a video investigation to submit, send it in to Mike Vecchio and Investigates at gmail.com. Uh, if you listen on iTunes, YouTube, or any other platform, make sure to leave a comment, subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend. Every little bit of interaction helps the show to grow. And go to podcastmerch.com for t-shirts, hoodies, and mugs. And Natalie. Uh, you can follow me at Natalie DeChico Edits on Instagram and watch Gas Digital Now on YouTube. Natalie's doing Gas Digital Now. Natalie, what is the show for those of uh, the low-functioning whites watching this? <laughs> it's a uh, show where we talk about everything that's happened at Gas Digital this week. All we right, yeah. And Natalie, you host, it, you host it with Blind Mike. We do, sure okay. do. Okay. We, and, talk, uh, we love talking about this show. You ask awesome. the hard-hitting questions. That's right. Okay, guys, I'm going to do just questions for you now, mostly about incarceration, mm. and uh, because it gives us a window, which you guys don't have in jail, but um, <laughs> a window for our fans. You, have you know, Woo. you do have windows with bars on them. Yes, you know, bar very right cloudy windows. Yeah, yeah. You can't see so through them. So I'm going to. You guys can answer. Did you have conjugal visits in your time? No. And uh, and and why not? Consensual. Did you, were, you, were you outraged that you could not go to a trailer and make love to? We weren't doing that long. Yeah, you okay. had to do, no, because you had to do like more. You have to be in a maximum jail doing more than ten years. And... There's only four states that still have conjugal visits. Is I New York the, one of them? I think New York, York is, is one of them. them. Yeah. New York and California are both yeah. mm-hmm. conjugal visit states. I guess the rest of the states are prude. Yeah, <laughs> don't let you. They don't like jail babies. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, did you have to eat with your own race? I would hate that. No, oh, not not on the East whites. Coast. No. Uh, and how was it for a Jewish guy? You couldn't eat with the Aryans. There's Could actually you? quite a, quite. A, there's no Aryans in really in New York. Show okay. me swastika tattoo. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> I'm the only I'm the first Jew <laughs> co-chair of the Aryan Brotherhood of uh, no I would not say that they'll kill me. Um, there, I met like two skinheads while I was right. in. They're they're not a, a very prevalent. I don't know if that's the right word. Prevalent, prevalent in New in New York. I think it's more of a West Coast thing. Right. But I hung. He didn't grow up in Long Island. Yeah. So I know. hung out. You know, I'm I hung out with mostly Puerto Ricans, Latin Kings while I was incarcerated. Okay. Yeah. Do you speak Spanish? Horrible Spanish. Horrible Spanish. Yeah, but at least it's a start. You know, it's a little bit. I feel like that would be the gap to bridge. Like, if you spoke fluent Spanish, you can get along with well, the... Mexican a lot of guys. New Yorkans don't speak Spanish. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so it's not... Like, in New York, you don't have to hang with whites. No. Okay. It, it, where I was at, it almost just kind of happened naturally. Like yeah. The, the, pe- <laughs> the gang stayed by themselves. Like, the Dominicans hung around with each other. Puerto Ricans, like... They hung around each other. It was just mostly gang. And like I would I'd kind of be cool with different people and like Dominicans would be like, Oh, why are you hanging out, you know, with that black guy over yeah. there? You're talking with him too much. Right. Like it gets a little racy like that. Yeah. Racy. No pun intended. Racy. Real racy. And um uh any of you guys have you guys either of you guys been to Rikers? Of course. No. That's the I that's heard Rikers the, um, is brutal. That's one of the worst prisons in the country. Yeah. Well it's a, it's a, not even a prison, it's jail. a jail. Yeah, that is the jail jail for the five boroughs. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shithole. Terrible, right? Horrible. Terrible, terrible. I mean, super, super dangerous from what I understand. Very very scary. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, one of my first times there as a a young buck. Uh, There was a guy on the phone and he was like, he was just yelling. He was going, nah, 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 fuck that. He goes, fuck, I ain't never going home. And I was like, oh shit, like made me shudder. Yeah. You know what I mean? That this guy was only feet away from me. How many phone calls do you guys get a day? Or do you get a week? It's it's What's how much you want call? to spend because yeah. like, be they're with you, expensive. I, I stayed know away that, from the pain box, uh, yeah. the stress box. Yeah. Yeah. But there's people that would be on it all day, and like, like up, right girl. now it's like five dollars a call basically. Oh my god! For a 15 minute call, it cuts off after 15 minutes. And what's the work like? If you have a job in the kitchen, isn't it like 15 cents an hour? Or no, something? you don't even get paid. You don't get paid. It depends where on, I was at. It yeah, depends, depends on where you're at. Where you're at. I I were I had some kitchen jobs and make like four bucks a week right some shit like that yeah we got paid in food yeah. wow like they, yeah. they'd That's... give us the leftovers of what the guards didn't eat because mm-hmm. the guards would get regular food mm-hmm. and that's that's what i was doing and when i worked in the kitchen i lied about Having restaurant experience, mm-hmm. like I bust. I tables did the same shit when I was sixteen. I was <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I know how to cook carrots. So you know what's yeah. funny? The time I got put in the kitchen, I was in a place where like it was like everybody was basically working, right? And they were like, uh, they the guys were out in the dorm I was in were mad I got the kitchen job. They're like, you got to be here for like a year before you get that. Like, how'd you get right in? You know, somebody and I refused to take the job because I didn't want to have any problems. And they put me in solitary. Yeah, and I was like, all right, uh, two days. I was like, tell them I'll take the job. How is solitary, by the way? That's my next question. <laughs> Terrible. Like, I just want to get away from it yeah. all. And I just sometimes it's Dude. like I just want to get away from it all. I'm just tired. It's more are stressful. You in, are yeah. you in a are you in a first of all, are you in a uh uh what's that called? An audit not an auditorium, in like a gymnasium uh with with bunks? not for solitary. That's, no, not that, there not are solitary, but, that's a dorm. But, are, but a yeah, dorm, are you housed a in a dorm or are you housed in like two guys per cell? Well, now there's every. You, it's, it's I think it's one cells. man per cell, single cell, oh, and they I call like them that. pods now. Yeah, that's yeah. what they've called them. But some places are so overcrowded that you will be in a dorm in yeah. the gymnasium, yeah. or they might even have like a trailer that's part of it. Yeah, it's wow. usually the your security level. Yeah. So if yeah. you have like a if you have like a DUE yeah. or minor drug offense, you'll be, in a dorm. You'll, you'll be in a dorm with like sixty other guys. It's basically basically isn't it's that more dangerous though? It can be. Yeah. It can be, but it's really not because a lot of there a lot of people there are just like junkies. Not or, for me. Yeah. Not for me, man. Yeah? yeah. Well, he's a junkie, so yeah. it's safe for him. But they, they don't they don't mess with junkies. They look at them like money. They're like Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I would be once I got in, I wasn't a junkie no more. You yeah. know how that goes. But it takes a while. I was a big time drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> but one yeah, man a cell. Sees. I mean, I I'd like that, but um it's it, like but in solitary, it yeah. it dude, You're by yourself. it's just it's that like, one it doesn't yeah. sleep. The people don't sleep. They're, They're just screaming, day, They're yeah. rapping. Yeah. And some in some places too, you don't you even can hear everybody yeah, screaming. Yeah, everybody's rapping. yelling, "Yo, 17, I'm gonna kill your ass." Yeah. I never even met the guy before. I'm like, "What did I do?" You know what I mean? And then some places you don't even get out to make your phone call. Sometimes they have the phone on a big like spool of phone wire and they roll it to you. Yeah. And they'll dial the number for you and then pass the phone through the slot. Was it, where I was at uh 
it would be 20 cells. Like, you know, the old fashioned, like, the, yeah, he knows very it's well. Just back to, yeah. Well, no, you, the ones you see in movies. <laughs> movies, yeah, yeah. The ones you see in movies where the cells are like uh, side to side. Yeah. So it would be 20 cells, 20 inmates, and you only come out for a half hour a day. And then you can go to the yard, but a lot of people don't like going to the yard because that's where the fights usually yeah. happen. If somebody yeah. had a disagreement, mm -hmm. or some people just go to avoid. Any confidence. And sometimes they won't. You, you don't get the to shower worst, every day yeah. either. If for somebody yeah, like me, I would I would request to go. They'd say, "Do you want to go to the yard?" I'd be, "Can I go to the lawn?" <laughs> can I go to the grass? <laughs> I'm more of a suburban. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more of a lawn guy. Can, can I go to the grass? Yeah. Can I get Can I get half hour at the lawn? <laughs> the lawn. <laughs> You're gonna walk the lawn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> walk the lawn. <laughs> I, would, I would really like that. And so solitary is not. You have a. Can you write a. a a complaint or speak to somebody's manager oh, when somebody's course. threatening to kill you in solitary. Yeah. It's like good luck getting to me, dude, because yeah. no one can get to me. Yeah. I'm in protective solitary. Custody. That's yeah, that's PC. Yeah. yeah. So that's like that's different than solitary. Yeah. That's shoe yeah. segregated housing yeah. unit. Yeah. 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 It stands for Pussy City. Yeah. yeah. PC. Yeah. yeah. Pussy City. Yeah. Right. Punk City. Punks. Yeah. Punk yeah. City. Yeah. You don't want to go there. No. You know what I mean? Like if if you're in protective custody, like you don't know what they're gonna do to your food. It's fucking yeah. well, no, they, you're usually safe in there, but it's like you're putting yourself in the box now. Yeah. You're putting yourself in solitary right. confinement because you're scared. Speaking of food, how is the food? Horrible shit. Yeah, it's, it's not worse good. than school. Food. And I noticed that it's the trays, like the little portions, mm -hmm. are incarcerated from each other. Yeah, yeah. like they're they're <laughs> segregated, segregated from yeah. each other. Yeah. like the vegetables can't touch the beans. The right, beans right. can't touch. Yeah. What you and, guys call meat, yeah, and every place you go, if you, I always read the handbook of whatever institution I was in, but it would be like, "There's we, a handbook." Yeah, yeah. yeah, you get one when you when you roll up with your pillow and your blanket and your. I cup. still got mine somewhere. Yeah. I just, I and it, brought it in. All it will, all of them will say, especially in New York, this is the New York State bare minimum. That is the food we provide, yeah. and it's literally like I don't know, it's, it's less than two thousand calories a day between breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, the mashed wow. potatoes is like, yo, why are you over there talking to the peas, bro? Yeah. You got to stay with the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the um the commissary is big oodles and noodles yeah ramen yeah, like ramen, a ramen and, and uh and instant rice yeah. we just yeah. add hot water and and hot pickle is cheese. cigarettes money you can't well cigarettes is money because it's, you can't get it in there so it's yeah. just like weed it's just like coke yeah. it's just any other last contraband. time I was oh you're not allowed to have cigarettes no not or? anymore no okay. I don't know if they let in them prisons, smoke in maxes now uh, maybe I think in prisons you could smoke in the yard I believe I've heard but in county jails you can't smoke no in the county. Last time I was in the county, it was like for a lighter and a Newport 100 was 10 bucks worth of commissary. If you vape, do they have to put you in um, segregated because you'll get abused by the other prisoners? <laughs> by the other <laughs> smokers? Yeah, yeah by if the you other. vape, you're showing them, you know, you're about yeah. something else also. <laughs> yeah, they put you in the AIDS infirmary. Yeah, uh, homosexual activity. Uh, <laughs> whoa, I didn't, I didn't mean to go there. Um, yeah, but in the box, you don't get, when you're in solitary confinement, you don't get commissary. Right. So you'll eat. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dinner comes around like four, between four and five. And, you and then you got to wait till five in the next morning to eat. So like I, I used to save uh, in my cup a bit of each meal. Mm -hmm. So I have something to eat at night. And you just lose so much weight. That's the worst part is the Jailhouse hunger. casserole? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For later That's on. exactly yep. what it was. Yep. I like the that. casserole surprise. I like that thinking yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a squirrel. Um, <laughs> a little Dominican squirrel. Little Dominican do you have squirrel. to shower? Do you shower alone? Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. The prisoners are they allowed to have cell phones? Uh, no, no, but they're you can in get there. them though. Yeah, some places I was in there was multiple showers, but we would have a rule that you know you didn't shower together. You ever see we jail play, TikTok? We didn't play that shit. Yeah, that's another thing I had. Written if you down. shower together, we would fuck you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Not like because it's not like a sports team. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, jail tick. What's jail TikTok? Could you explain it for? Our, uh, uh, jail TikTok is once. just a bunch of criminals who smuggled phones right. in, and they just start accounts, and they'll show you how to cook. Some of them will do dances. Some of them actually show you uh, uh, them uh, cutting somebody up, stabbing somebody up. Wow. Yeah, yeah I've seen some of those. Uh, I've seen... There's one video I really like. Uh, I wish I, I could bring it up. There's, there's a one guy. He's just in his cell showing each guard and how... what. They smuggle in like oh that guy he does McDonald's that guy mm -hmm. gets you the phone that guy takes the phone and sells it back to you yeah. this guy that lady will fuck you for fifteen hundred dollars but she does weird things like time limits and mm -hmm. it's just that that well, I love yeah, yeah she's trying to run a business yeah, yeah. no yeah it's, I mean it's, it's a little efficient yeah only yeah. felons and you can't get caught you you fu you fucking somebody for forty five minutes it's more of a chance to get caught right, right. um. Well, I would have. Are you guys worried about the conflict that from you know we all as comics want to get big and draw huge crowds, right? And then 
you would be like, um, no, I don't like this because it's overcrowding. Yeah. Because of what you're dealing with. Oh, in yeah, jail. there's yeah. things I've definitely, uh, from being institutionalized, that have, yeah, make me uh, get on edge, I would imagine. I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. I think yeah. you are too, right? Yeah. It's just like, uh, I've, I've only experienced this, but it was like in an isolated where, like, Skank Fest last mm-hmm. year. People would just come up to you. It's, and good, it's like, appropriate to yeah, it's appropriate Skank Fest time. to prison. Yes. Yes. Especially in Vegas. Especially a fucking in a Vegas. county jail for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting characters in both. Hey, yes. man. Yeah. Gio Perez, Derek Dresher, we love you, man. Yeah. Those guys, the Skankfest guys, those guys are definitely being dorms. For sure. Those yeah. are dorm guys. Yeah. You know yeah. what yeah. I mean? A lot yeah. of DUEs, mm-hmm. domestic violence. Yep. Um, all, the, all the fun <laughs> stuff, you know? Last question both of you could answer. Uh, how would you escape? How oh. would you escape? Well, I, it would be... So there was one time I had this job where they would let me like throw the garbage out and there was this big bay door, right? And it would just open. And there, that spot there was like, I, I could get out. I could get to the road. Right. And I was like, I, I, even though I, I did a mostly skid bids a year, two years, I was like, I really want to, I want, I want to run. I want to go. And where would you go? Like an Applebee's? I think like, I would have ran right into the woods and probably got bit by a bunch of fucking bugs and be like, I'm going to go back. That's what I think would have happened. Or they, or they, or they would have just shotgunned me. There you go. See how, how far I could fly. Yeah. Me, I'd find the biggest, ugliest female <laughs> officer, right, and befriend her, mm-hmm. and then you know slowly make her fall in love with me, yeah, and then have her help me escape. Playing the long game, sticking in between her game. titties on yeah. the way out, right? Uh, I mean, never jump between her legs, yeah. or just you know give me the tools I need to escape, right? Love, you would use love, love as a weapon. Love, love, love is, is the, the biggest. Love yeah. is the answer. It's also the biggest. Love weapon. is the key. Oh, love is the key to an escape. Uh, bars. I think it's great to end there. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you, uh, Mike. For, appreciate for Derek, for Gio, thank you for um, Shannon, for Natalie. I'm Mike Fagan. This has been a very informative episode. Uh, we didn't even get to any articles because these guys are so interesting. Watch their podcast, On the Gate, and uh, keep watching our podcast, Mike Vecchione Investigates. We'll see you guys next week. Guys, thank you for listening to Mike Vecchione Investigates. And if you go to gasdigitalnetwork.com and use promo code MBI, you will get one week free. That's gasdigitalnetwork.com, promo code MBI, you will get one week free. Thank you again for listening to Mike Vecchione Investigates on the Gas Digital Network.